Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve min cost climbing stairs, lead code number 746. So we're given an integer array called cost, where each cost at i is the cost of the ith step on a staircase. And once you pay that cost, you can either climb one or two steps. Now we're allowed to either start from the step with index zero or the step with index one. Now we need to return the minimum cost to reach the top of the floor. So similar to climbing stairs, except it's the minimum cost to get to the top. So if we're given this cost array, you can start either at index zero or index one, that's up to us. And let's say we started at index zero. Now we can climb either one or two steps. You really wouldn't wanna climb one in this case because you could already start here for free. So that would make no sense. If you did start here, you could climb two steps immediately. You would pay that $10 to get here. Then you'd have to pay that extra $20 to actually escape. You can picture it as kind of, we're escaping the array because these are all costs on a staircase. So to get to the end here, you'd have to pay this 10 plus this 20, you could escape for 30. Or if you started here, you could just immediately escape because you could jump two right away. And then you only have to pay 15. So 15 would be the minimum cost it would take to reach the top of the floor. Okay, let's say we were given this cost array here. So you'd probably want to start here, you could pay 10 to get over here, pay an extra five to get over here, then we could get over here and get out. That'd be a total of 10 plus five plus four plus four that is going to give you a sum of 23 so the min cost here would be 23 so we know we could start in either one of two positions you could either start where it costs 10 to jump or you could start where it costs 15 to jump so you could start either here or you could start here so the first step costs 10 the second one costs 15 this one costs 5 this one costs 30 this one costs 4 this one costs another 4 and finally this one would cost 10 so basically, if you got here, what we actually need is to get over here. So this is basically the top of the staircase here. We want the minimum cost it takes to get right here. Now we can start either here or here. In fact, it actually costs zero to get to both of these things here. So what we're going to write on the top of the staircase, what it would cost to get there. Okay, so this is the price it would take that when you're there, what you have to pay to get to the next steps. But this right here, this is actually going to be 10. This is going to be placed as the minimum cost it would take to get to that floor. And the reason it's 10 is because we basically have three chances here. We could start here and then we pay $10 to get here and then you'd pay another 15 to get there. Or you could start where we are here and pay 10 to get all the way there. Or you could have started if you wanted right here and then paid 15 to get over here. But the minimum of all of those things, basically 10, 15, and 25 is 10. So the minimum cost it would take to get to this floor is 10. Okay, so what is the minimum cost it would take to get right here? Well, we are getting here from one of two places. We're either getting there from here or we are getting there from here. So we can actually pay simply 15 to get there. Now, is that the cheapest option? Well, it's actually tied with the other option because it costs 10 to get here and it also costs an additional five to jump from there. So you could either take the 15 plus zero to get here or you could take the 10 plus five to get here. Either way, the minimum cost to get here is 15. So to get here, well, we're getting there from either here, two steps back, or we're getting there from one step back. If you wanted to get there from here, then you'd have to pay the 10 you've already paid plus the five additional. So you could get there in 15, and that's much better than being here, having already paid 15, and then having to pay an additional 30. That would be 45. So 15 is much smaller than that. So the minimum cost it would take to get here is 15. Okay, so to get here, you're doing that from either one step back or from two steps back would you rather 15 plus 30 which is 45 or would you rather 15 plus 4 which is 19 you would definitely rather 19 hopefully you see what we're getting at here it's basically to get to this new spot it's going to be the minimum of this plus this and this plus this so it is going to be 19 versus 23 we can get there and then to finally get here is the spot you're interested in obviously you wanted 23 and that is actually what we computed at the beginning so we definitely got that right. Okay, so basically what we're doing here, this is actually a bottom-up dynamic programming technique where we're using tabulation because basically we're making this table or an array of the minimum cost for each floor. So if you look at it like this here, basically the array that we're building up, well, how long is this? Firstly, so this is our cost array here. We have all of those right here. So if we're saying there's basically n of those things, well, then we actually need 
added one more position here because we're kind of trying to escape that. So this is going to be length n plus one. That'll come up in the code. And essentially what we're doing here is just always trying to find the minimum cost it would take to get to each of those floors in a row. And obviously it's kind of going to increase as we go forward because it's always going to cost more or at least the same to get to further steps. So if you were to call this array cost here or C for short, we're basically trying to build up this DP array. That's just a convention, which is going to be these top values here, 0, 0, 10, 15, and so on. Basically, each of those values are the minimum cost it would take to get to that floor because ultimately we want the minimum cost it takes to get to the top of all of those floors here. So we'd keep setting DP at I equal to the minimum, because of course you want the minimum of, well, if you're getting to floor I, basically, you're getting there from either two steps back. So you're getting there from either I minus two, or you're getting there from I minus one. So if you're getting there from I minus two, well, it would take the DP at I minus two. So the minimum cost it would take to get to that floor, plus the additional cost it would take to take that jump, which would be cost at I minus two. It would be the minimum of that, and very similarly, DP at I minus one, plus the cost it would take to take that step, which is cost at I minus one. Now this is kind of jumping straight into the bottom up approach, which is often more intuitive, not always, but it often is. We're still going to write the top down solutions, which are basically just going to have this same formula here, but in a recurrence relation instead. Also, our last solution will actually be a bottom DP constant space solution because, well, we're already given the cost array. So you already kind of have these values right here. So if you fix this right here, really you would need the cost array at the previous two values. And you would also just need the minimum cost it takes to get to the previous two. So you could also do that with like a prev and cur approach. If you haven't heard of that, see Fibonacci or climbing stairs. And uh, yeah, we're good to code our solutions up. Now, firstly, we're gonna write our recursive solution and this is not going to pass the test cases. It'll be too slow. This actually would have a time complexity of big O of two to the N. I'm not going to fully explain why in this video. If you watch Fibonacci, that'll definitely tell you. And because of the recursive call stack, this is also going to take up big O of N space on the call stack. Okay, so we're going to get N is equal to the length of the cost array. And we're going to get a helper function. We'll get min cost at an index I. So this is saying at an index I, what is the minimum cost it would take to get there? Now, before before we even worry about this, we're writing this because we want the min cost at index n. And this is interesting because n is actually one past the array. You know, the last index is always n minus one. But uh, that's basically the point here is you're kind of trying to escape this array. You want to know the minimum cost to get kind of out of this array here. So firstly, our base cases here, if i is less than two, we can simply return zero. That's all of our base cases because simply saying if i is zero or i is one, then we can get there for free. We're able to start there for free. And so that's just zero cost to get Get there. Now, otherwise, what is the min cost to get here? Well, we can do that recursively. It's going to be from either two steps back or one step back. We can return the minimum of the cost it would take to take that jump from two steps back, plus the minimum cost it would take to be at that step, which is two steps back, which is our recursive function. So it's the minimum of that, and you probably guessed it here, the cost of I minus one. So the cost it would take to get to one step back, plus the minimum cost it would take to get to that that floor. So this is very nice and very easy code to write, except it's not going to pass the test cases because it's very, very slow. We're going to be calling this function many, many times on the same value of i, and it's going to be recurring all the way down. That's going to cause it to be big O of two to the n. So this is your kind of recurrence solution here. We can quickly make this solve the test cases by turning it into a top-down DP, aka a memoization approach. This basically just means caching function calls. So we need a cache, we'll call it memo is a dictionary, it should have our base cases. So the index zero, it's free to get there. It's also free to be at the index of one. Okay, so those are our base cases. And what you always do for memoization here is if I is in the memo, then you don't want to do any extra work. You've already called this function on this value of I before. You just want to return memo at this I. Now, otherwise, you do actually need to compute it here. And so you'd be setting memo at I to be this thing that you're going to compute here. And basically, once you've done that and put it in the memo, it's now in there. So you can simply just return memo at I 
right at this point. This simple change here is going to fix this and make it time complexity of big O of n. This is going to pass our test cases because it's pretty darn fast. Okay, let's change this to the preferable bottom-up DP, aka tabulation approach. Now, this is going to have the same time and space complexity. We are not going to use a cache for this, and we actually don't need our helper function either. So we'll get our DP array, which is the minimum cost it would take to get to that floor. DP is going to be a bunch of zeros. And as we said in the visualization there, it needs to have n plus one spaces, because if it had only n spaces, well, then that would kind of keep you trapped in this array here. We need to find the minimum cost to basically break out of this stuff. So this is going to have n plus one positions. And ultimately, you'd want to return DP at n, that final index there. Now, our indices over the loop is going to be for i in the range of start at 2, because we have our base cases for i equals 0 and i equals 1. And normally, you set your base cases up here, but they're actually already zeros, so they're already set. The first new thing is going to be the third spot, which is index 2. And we want to send this up until this is going to be n plus 1. This is inclusive up to n, so you want to make sure you modify the last index, which would be dp at n. So for each of these indices, you just set it to that same relation we had before. We'll set dp at i equal to the minimum of dp at i minus 2 plus the cost at i minus 2, the minimum cost it takes to get two steps back, plus the cost it takes to take that jump, and the dp at i minus 1 plus the cost at i minus 1. Basically, once you've figured out this kind of recurrence relationship here, it's going to show up in every single thing that you do. So this is the bottom up way to do it. And you would want to return the last value, which is dp at n. We can run that and that's going to be the fastest thing we've done so far. Okay, so that's our bottom up dp tabulation approach. You can also do this via bottom up dp constant space. Not every problem allows you to do this because we have this property of we only care about two steps back and we're basically already given the cost array then you're able to do this so this will eventually have time o of n and we're going to bring this down to o of one space we're doing that by erasing the dp array and we'll get prev and cur are set to our base cases at the beginning which are both going to be zeros we keep this thing over the same positions here except it's going to be prev and cur get updated at the same time prev is always going to get updated just to be what cur is so it takes one step back and cur is the that same recurrence relation we've seen over and over again, except it's going to be cur and prev based. So I'll just copy it here. It's going to be the minimum of the cost it takes to get two steps back, plus the previous, because that's the one associated with two steps back, and the cost it takes to get one step back and the current. So basically, current is one step back, prev is two steps back. So prev is associated with i minus two, and cur is associated with i minus one. It looks a little weird, and it's not the prettiest code, but it does make the space go to constant. At the end here, you can just return your final value, which will be cur. If you submit that, that should be the fastest. Leak code's a little random, uh, and it definitely uses no memory at all, really, just a couple variables. I hope that was interesting, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.